Hello, my fellow tattooers and book lovers. And anyone else who's popped in because you're curious about what this is or you've got a bit lost. Welcome everyone. I'm Chatty. This is my channel, Chatty the Mad Chatter. And I'm going to be chatting relatively madly away about my November TBR. And I have decided to play my book game. Uh, the TBR physical book game that I occasionally do to choose my TBR. Uh, November feels a lot more flexible. I've got less plans. I've got like areas of plans, but not like I have to read that book. I have to read that book. And to be honest, I don't really know what mood I'm in. I think some books I need a bit of a push to read them. And then once I'm in it, I'll enjoy it. Other books, I need a bit of a push to go, do you want to try it and see if you enjoy it? And if you don't, we can wave it goodbye. And other books, I'm like, why haven't you read this yet? You really want to. What is holding you back? So this is going to be really good for me to do all of that stuff. I am also excited to be playing the game again because I haven't played it for a while. It's just the thought of setting it up. It just makes me want to sort of roll over and just go, no, no. But once I do it, it's lots of fun. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I know that people have been since the last game. Was it July? I think it was July. Yeah. I think I haven't played it since the summer. <laughs> that feels like a whole very long time ago. Um, yeah, people have been waiting for Pet Pig so we can have some guinea pig footage. And they are adorable. Um, they're called Grover and Nacho. So I think they should pick a book. So that will be happening even if it doesn't land on it i will do a final book pick with the guinea pigs it's all set up downstairs for their floor time so it's it's gonna happen so yeah i'm sorry i'm feeling a bit tired um i'm not sure why um it's been going on for a while uh, i'm gonna have some blood tests so we'll see so if i look like i'm about to drop off to sleep at any given moment it's because i am but I can't remember the last time I filmed something apart from today. I filmed a video already today because that's an important video that needs to go out. But back in the like regular routine, my September stack of books is sat on my shelf judging me for not talking about them. And uh, I can't at the moment because I'm like, I, I have lost the ability to chat at this time of night when I now have the physical time to film. It's just not going to work. Um, so I have finally got a day off and I'm like, I'm filming. I want to film. It will make me happy. <laughs> and then I'm going to crash um so yeah so I should probably stop waffling and crack on because otherwise I'm gonna run out of time to do the crashing part and I'll just be like dashing off to school and then collapsing I don't know on the field I haven't decided so uh I'm not going to explain the game um if you would like an explanation I'm going to redirect to here and chatty of the past can tell you the game because she had energy she had energy to go through all of that um and you might not care what the rules are so if you just want to go in and just live for the chaos, we can do that. We can just go in. And do you know what? I realise I haven't even written out what my colour prompts are. Um, I've written them on a bit of paper. So we're just going to use that today. It's I'm sorry, it's minimal effort, but I promise you guinea pigs. So there we go. I mean, that just beats everything else really, doesn't it? And if I don't do it now, it's just not going to happen. And then there just won't be a video. And I want there to be a video, so we're doing it. Okay. I think the waffle has reached, uh, you know, high levels, so we're going to stop that. Uh, on my channel, if you are new here, hello. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a chaotic, waffly vibe. Um, if that's not your thing, move along. If it is your thing, hi, stay, stick around, because there's more to come. Uh, I do not edit on my channel. <laughs> well, I do, uh, but not always. And generally, I prefer not to. So this is a non-editing video, so it just keeps rolling. We're on take two, and now we're in it, because I've got nearly four minutes of footage, and I don't want to redo. So we are in it for the long haul. Uh, let the chaos commence. Here's my little teacup gimmick. Clink, 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 clink. <sighs> One shot. There's no editing. Right, we're going in with the game. I'm just going straight in with the rolls and we're going to let the dice fall where it may. I need a dice. I'll go find a dice and then I can use pause. Pause is helpful. We like pause. Um, as long as I don't screw it up and have several part one, part two, part three videos, which I've done previously. I'm still waffling. Let's do the first roll. Let's just cut the waffle. Do the first roll. Come on, we can do this. Actually, <laughs> that's a total lie. I'm not going to do the first roll because I totally forgot. I wanted to do one other thing before we got into the rolls. Got a nice stack of books here. Um, so I would like you to vote on one of these books. Um, these are all the books, not all of them. These are a selection of books um, that I had originally on my TBRs throughout the year and haven't read yet. 
So I thought it'd be fun to talk through this selection and you can tell me which one you'd rather I read. So I thought that would be entertaining. And then obviously the one with the most effects I will read. If you would like to do like one, two and three, so like one being your first choice, two being your second and three being your third, that would also be fun as well. So the first one that was on my TBR for January and I did not read and still haven't read is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Garcia? Garcia. Um, it's not my usual book. There is an element of horror in here, but I have heard good things. I've heard it doesn't work for other people. I have no idea if it's going to work for me or not. So if I read it, then I will have that question answered. So this is one option. I'm going to see if I can prop them up along here. There we go. Mexican Gothic. The second option is Secrets of the Stars by Maria Kuznia. This um, was on my February TBR. Um, it was also on my March and my June TBR. So it's it should be read. <laughs> um, this is the second book in the middle grade fantasy duology, The Ship of Shadows. Um, and I really enjoyed that and I want to keep reading. This is also going to feature in one of my other prompts for series. So if it gets picked for that one, then obviously it will get taken off this list. Oh, we're doing we're doing well so far. They're not they're not falling over. Uh, March, I have Kate Atkinson's Life After Life. It's a big chunker of a book, um, but again, heard amazing things, and I just haven't picked it up and read it because I've had other goals that I wanted to achieve, and um, it's it's big, <laughs> but good. So this is another option. I then have a reread that I've thrown on here. Um, and in contrast, this is small and tiny, and this is back when books used to be £3.50 for a paperback. Yes, what, what a while ago that was. This edition was published in 1984, two years before I was born. How marvellous. This is The Leper of St Giles by um, Ellis Peters. It is a medieval whodunit. It is one of the books in the Brother Cadfell series. These are my comfort reads. I've read them several times. I'd like to read another Brother Cadfield, but of course I'd like to read everything. So he gets shoved back. But this is an option that was from my June TBR. Uh, another option from my June TBR, which I have also featured quite a bit on this channel and haven't yet to read, is Mrs. Moore Goes Missing by um, Malia Sismikawa. Um, this is a Polish writing duology. It is historical fiction mystery with a noble woman turning sleuth. I did enjoy the little bits I've read in my try chapter. If you're interested, you can see those videos there. They edited and took forever to come out. Um, but it didn't quite grab me as intensely as some of the other books in that video. Um, but I still enjoyed it and I still want to read it. There we go. You can help Cadful stay up because he's falling over. Quite hard to actually see the books that I've put on the shelf because I'm literally double stacking them in front of my husband's bookshelf. But hey ho, needs must. Um, July, the I have two options. Um, so we have Sense and Sensibility, not that you can see this very well because the sunlight is shining on it. That's relatively better. Um, this is the season's edition of Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Again, it's another reread, but I've never read from this copy and I want to. I was gonna read this for Jane Austen July and just never got round to it. Um, but I have in, enjoyed and felt in the mood for, but like so many other things, it just got pushed back. And finally, I have Ikenga by Nnedi Okorafor. I love Nnedi Okorafor. This is a middle grade, it's a standalone, um, and I am keen to read it. When I was kind of doing my July, I needed books that didn't feel quite so intense, whereas I am now in a mood for more of those books so I feel that this will be a delightful one to read so there we go I can slightly angle them so you can see them slightly better um but please vote on one of those seven books please or give me your top three okay now I'm going to explain the colour prompts and we'll go into the first roll all right the books are now beautifully aligned on the shelf I think so my prompts for November. 
um, if I land on a yellow space, um, I will have the very anticipated pet pick where um, one of my guinea pigs will um, go for some sort of treaty food. It could be a nugget, it could be a piece of lettuce on top of a choice of two or three books, depending how I feel. And that will then allow me to choose that book. I'm feeling at the moment, I, I wasn't literally going to go straight in for pet pick because I get a little bit of flexibility about where I start. But I don't know what I want the book choices to be. So I'm going to leave pet pick further down where it's less, <laughs> where I've got less choice because I'm not feeling choosy today. The green space is um, the series spin, specifically continuing a series. I've got lots of series on the go. I want to keep getting through them. They're waiting for me to read them. So I've got six options and I'm going to spin a spinner and whichever one the spinner lands on will be the book I pick. I then have gold art. I've done this before and um, I did not have the correct Nerf gun uh, to allow me to do it. It took a while. Uh, I'm hoping this one will be more successful. I'm going to stick um, four sticky notes on the mirror, each with a different kind of goal for my reading that I want to achieve. And then the book I pick will help me get towards that goal. And finally, we have an old favourite. We have the 30 seconds prompt. So I pull out a prompt card and I've got 30 seconds to choose a book that hits that prompt. So that's going to be fun, isn't it? So those are all the colours. Um, on top of that, we have the Worrying Worm and the Lucky Ladder, which I'm, I don't want this time. <laughs> the Lucky Ladder is going to give me too much flexibility and the Worrying Worm is going to worry me. So ideally, I would like to make it through the game with six books that have not landed on a ladder or a web. And I feel that's possibly all I'm going to land on. I'm also, because I've not done this for a while, if I land on a prompt that I have already done, I will be skipping ahead. I'm not even gonna give it twice. If I've already done it, I'm skipping ahead. Um, until I've done all four of my colors. <laughs> Worrying worms and lucky ladders don't count. Um, that's basically what I'm looking for. <laughs> so let's see how it goes. So the first roll, we get to see my disgusting carpet. Here we go, ready, roll, and it is a four. And with a four, I can basically go any direction and land on any colour. So because I don't want yellow, I'm going for this starting point on the pink, and I'm going to go clockwise because it's easier for my brain. What? Oh, so one is the pink two blue three yellow and four is blue and i have no idea what blue is so we will find out together so a blue turns out to be gold dart so in a moment i'm gonna go get a nerf gun and some darts and fire at sticky notes on my mirror <laughs> the four goals that i could hit um is book box prediction so this is choosing a book for um I did a video of the 2022 book box, uh, book boxes, book, 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 let's start again. Book box books that I received in 2022 for Fairy Loot and Shelterbox. And I have got four books left. So that will help towards me doing that. And then I can do the video going, were my predictions correct? <laughs> Goal number two is to read a book from the 2023 Middle Grade Reader's Choice Awards. Um, goal number three is to read a book by a global majority author. And goal number four is to read a book from my 2021 book haul, because I'm trying to read a certain percentage of all my hauls from 21 to 24 and uh, by the end of the year. So all of those are going to be good for my reading goals, hence the prompt so let's get this mirror sorted and go and get some uh, darts okay i've tested it this time and it actually works oh that was definitely number four the 2021 haul apologies i have no idea what the footage looked like just then because i found myself going back to talking to the camera and obviously it's facing out so you couldn't see me anyway it went Definitely, I hit goal number four, which was a book for my 2021 book haul. So I have pulled out four choices. I have got The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kira Wood Hargrave that I still haven't read <laughs> and I really need to. Um, yes. 
um i have the nature of witches by rachel griffin i mean this seems very seasonal which feels like it should be the right time to read it and it's one of those books that i was really excited about and i bought and i just wanted to be the right perfect reading moment to read and it just never happened never happened um i have the lamp lighters by emma stonex again i was excited for this um thriller it's got like a cold wintry setting so again it feels very seasonal and the right time to be reading this and finally another book that i really need to read is under raised tainted skies by louise gornell so all of these books are very much tbr vets um this is a ya contemporary that focuses on uh, mental health issues and i've heard so many good things about it so i think the best thing for me to do is try and work out what mood I'm in right now. And actually, no, I do. I, it, the Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. If I'm not reading it now, in the autumn, it is kind of like elemental magic. So technically you could read it any time of the year, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling now. And as I've been putting it off such a long time, that feels good. Also under the dust jacket. We have got, well, first of all, we've got lilac end pages. And then under the dust jacket, we have got this gorgeous hard back with butterflies and different wild flowers all over it. And it just looks so beautiful. Um, so yeah, that very much feels cozy November, witchy read, Nature of Witches. Thank you, book game, for your help with that. Let's move on to roll number two. First square, still one dice, and we have a five. So I'm going clockwise from the blue. So one, two, three, four, that was close, five. And it's blue, and I said I was moving on to the next one if I've already done that prompt, so therefore it is green. Green is series spin. We're gonna take a little walk to the spinning room this being the only large area of floor space is my children's bedroom so here i have laid out against this very helpful blanket that naturally divides itself beautifully um i have got six series continuation books so i have a middle grade by anna james in the pages and co series i have yet to earn the next book i need to read which is book five which i think is the tree house um, so I've got Book Smugglers being a placeholder, but it's Book 5, The Treehouse, which I would need to earn from under my bed. Um, the next book in the Belladonna series is Wisteria by Adeline Grace. Again, I've recently just received it, which I'm so excited about, but it's under my bed. I need to earn it. So Foxglove is placeholding. I have the next book in the Celestial Kingdoms duology, The Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan. I said Secrets of Stars was going to be appearing in another prompt. This is Maria Kuznia's middle grade um, follow-up to The Ship of Shadows. I have As Against You by Frederick Backman, which is the second book uh, following on from Beartown. And finally, I have John Gwynn, Hunger of the Gods is being a placeholder in the Bloodsworn saga. I am in November going to a book signing and sort of book talk by him where I will be picking up my copy of The Fury of the Gods, the final book in the Blood Swan Saga. So let's spin and see which one we get. The arrow is going round and it's going to stop on number two, which is Heart of the Sun Warrior. So Heart of the Sun Warrior is the second book in the duology of the du blah, 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 duology uh, by Sue Lin Tan. I read The Daughter of the Moon Goddess in May and wanted to continue, but it just, it just didn't quite work. <laughs> uh, June and July were a bit weird in general. And then all the other months where I was thinking it would happen, it just didn't. Uh, this has definitely been on my sort of unofficial TBR for September and October, and I haven't read it. So this works really, really well. I definitely want to be finishing off this duology. Um, so I did really enjoy The Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And um, I think the sort of lyrical whimsy of the Chinese folktale, but also there were a lot of stakes in the plot as well. And I did enjoy the characters. So I think I'm definitely ready to get back into this series. Let's do roll number three. Feeling a little apprehensive now. Okay, we have got four again. 
we might never leave this level on the board. One, two, three, four, it's blue. So therefore it is yellow because I'm moving on because I've already done blue. So yellow. Yellow is pet pick. <laughs> so I'm going to gather together some books and we will go and see which one uh, Nacho and Grover are going to choose for me. Um, we're probably going to go with Nacho as the guinea pig to help me choose because he's just a lot more inquisitive um, and enjoys um, exploring. Whereas Grover, although he's the alpha piggy, he's a bit more shy and a little bit more suspicious um, of what is going on. So we'll probably hide and not really come out. So this is Grover because you probably won't see him. <laughs> come on, you want to have a little bit of cucumber? Yes. There we go, we have a look in there. Oh, there's Nacho, just come out the tunnel. Um, so I'm going to show you the books and let them have a little explore. Because I've just taken them out of their cage and just popped them into floor time. And they might be a little bit apprehensive. Did you drop that? There we go. Okay, look, you have that one there. Hey, Nacho, you going to come get this one? Can you come? Can Nacho come? You're going to sit there. I'm going to move over here and tell you which books I've chosen. <laughs> them to choose from. So <laughs> the books I've chosen are probably going to go off screen and not come anywhere near me now. <laughs> um, I thought I'd go for middle grades because uh, I haven't got any on my TBR yet and it's always nice to have middle grades on the TBR. Uh, so again, Girl of Inca Stars by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, uh, The Stand In for The Treehouse by Anna James which is the fifth book in the book smuggler Smugglers and a new one which is the Lost Library by Rebecca Stead and Wendy Mass. This was the winner of the Middle Grade Reader's Choice Awards in 2023. So we'll see what they pick. <laughs> I, I don't know how long it's going to take them to do this, um, so I might waffle away and see if they come close to uh, doing this. There's no, no other food here, so they might do. like that a bit further away from me and I will put cucumbers here and see if one of them will come and take them. So I don't have a preference as to which one they choose because they're all books that I want to read and um, the Lost Library they're coming a bit close although you see Nacho you can't see Grover but he's coming around the outside Oh, there he is. He's on the screen now. He's met. He's. Oh, I think Grover's done it. It was Grover. Grover has chosen the Girl of Incan Stars. Well done, Grover. Well done. And Nacho has not done what I thought he was going to do, which was come and explore and uh, get a piece of food. Nacho, Nacho, there's a cucumber. Nacho, Nacho, there's a cucumber. A cucumber? No, it's going in the completely opposite direction. Um, right, we'll say goodbye to the guinea pigs. <laughs> and um, so there we go, the Girl of Incan Stars. I mean, it's about time. It's been on my list for ages. Nacho, you are rubbish at exploring. Look, Grover, Grover's worked it out. He knows the food's over this way. He, he might be coming to get a second. Gonna, oh, I moved. So he's moved. He's gone back. He's hiding. He's going to move all the books away now. See if we get the cucumber. Uh, but yeah, it's about time that I read this Kira Millwood Hargrave book because I've only read one Kira Millwood Hargrave and I have many on my list that I want to read. So The Girl of Inca Stars is long overdue, I repeat. <laughs> Nacho, you are absolutely failing to find this cucumber. I think Grove is going to make the second one. Here he comes. He's got his head coming. You can just see his head coming out the tunnel. Oh, he's, he's got scared. He saw me and got scared. I'm not scary, honest. I'm a very kind human. They are completely off camera. You cannot see what they're doing. Oh, 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 there's Grover. Oh, here comes Nacho. Do you want it? Look, he's here. He's here. Come on, come and get it. Come on, Nacho. Come on, can we get the cucumber? Come on. No, you don't trust me today. You don't trust me because I've dumped you in a really strange place. That's fine. We'll leave them to it. We're not going to get any more from them today. <laughs> They're going to run off when I move past and turn off the camera. <laughs> Doo -doo. 
roll number four is a four again. So that is one, two, three, four, and it's on yellow. So technically I should move it up one. But do you want to just do another pet pick, been as they're already having a lovely time on the floor? I'll choose some different books and just two this time. So I'm going for The Mountain Sing by Nguyen Pan Khoi Mai. And the other option is, oh, got it upside down. Um, Sleep Like Death by Kaylin Bayron. So Sleep Like Death is a YA fantasy and The Mountain Sing is an adult's historical fiction, possibly literary fiction. Uh, so I'm now going to up the stakes <laughs> for the piggies and I have got some lovely lettuce leaf to tempt them with. Okay, lettuces in front of books. They are hiding in this box here. So once they start emerging, I'll press record and we'll see um, if any piggies come to choose some books. I've moved out of the uh, makeshift <laughs> run. But there's no movement from the box. I may end up having to take it away. I moved the box. And they're not moving. <laughs> Nacho's eating the cucumber from earlier that was right next to him. So that was a mistake. Oh, Grover's gone for it. It sleep like death. <laughs> Grover's done it again. I really thought Nacho would be the one to uh, make a move. Please don't wear my book. Well, Nacho chose the mountain sing. <laughs> so there we go. Piggy, piggy action for you there. Nacho's got the idea now. He's just chowing down and all that good lettuce. And you can just about see Grover hiding in the tunnel on his uh, stolen hoard there. But yes, Sleep Like Death by Kaylin Bayron was the winner. Oh, Grover's going for another piece. There we go. Yep, Grover's definitely chosen Sleep Like Death. Nacho, you were too slow if you wanted the mountain sing. You needed to unfreeze a bit more. That is a huge piece of lettuce you're trying to tackle all in one go, Grover. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed all of the piggy uh, piggy action going on here. And um, I think I'm going to do maybe one more roll and see what I get. And um, then just talk through any other possibilities that may come up depending how my reading goes. Because also, um, uh, it, what day? it's the 24th of October. So there's six days left, like nearly a week. There's a whole week left of October. And... Um, I'm not entirely sure what books I'm going to be finishing off uh, in that time. So there may be a lot of books I didn't get to in October that I then put into November to read. Anyway, piggies are going to, well, they're not going to say bye. They're going to ignore you and munch on a load of lettuce. But I am going to go rescue those books. So Grover chose my second book as well. And we have Sleep Like Death by Kaylin Bayron. This is set in the same world as Cinderella is Dead. I haven't read Cinderella is Dead. But I feel it's going to be fine. I don't feel I'm going to need to. Um, I received this book in the July Fairy Loot um, book box. And I'm going to be buddy reading it with um, Emily from Novel Novels. Uh, which I'm really looking forward to. It's been a while since I've buddy read anything with her. So I'm very excited to be doing this. Especially because she's really recently got into fantasy a lot. And she adores Kaylin Bayron's books. So this is going to be really good fun. Um... It's sort of a reimagined inspired by Snow White, hence the poison apple. Um, so I'm excited to see what that fairy tale retelling is going to give us. I'm expecting kind of dark forest vibes. That's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see what happens. And the cover is very pretty. On the back, it says Cinderella is dead, but Snow White fights on. OK, final roll. And I'm going to change, change it up again. I'm just going to roll the dice. Whatever it lands on, it lands on. Apart from, if it lands on yellow, I'm going to be moving along to the next square. And I'm just going to accept whatever it is, even if it's blue or green, even if it's a worrying worm. And we're going to do that. Okay. Ready for roll number five. Final roll is four again. <laughs> right, here we go. Moving off the yellow. One, two, three, oh, 
four is a lucky ladder. And we've finally made it onto the next square. Okay, here are my lucky ladder cards. I'm going to shuffle them and pick one. A hooray for not getting any worrying worms. That is very exciting. I'm going for this one and it is uh, upside down. Is there a new series you want to start or a series you want to continue? Well, of course. <laughs> so, um, thinking of all the books that I have in my series that I should be continuing with, I think there is one book that is just calling out to me at the moment right now that I'm particularly really excited about. And it's one I don't have. It's the Fear of the Gods by John Gwynn. That is screaming my name. Um, Han goes in the other room. I will hold on to Shadow, which is here. Come out, Shadow. There we go. So here we go. This is Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn, which I read and reread last year. And then I read Hunger of the Gods last year, like quite late on. I think it was around about this time. So I think it's still enough in my mind that I don't need to reread. I'm just going to do a little refresher. Um, and what John Gwynn does brilliantly is he gives you a list of characters and he gives you um, a little bit of a the story so far, which is very helpful in epic fantasy. I am very excited for this series. Again, it's like the perfect time of year to be reading this. It's Norse inspired. It's full of exciting um, beasts, various different people that we've been following. Um, who is going to end up alive at the end of all of this? Um, I'm being wary of what I say because I don't want to ruin it for anyone. But um, we follow three different characters. I feel there's a lot of running around. Um, there's battles. There's... Um, uh, a sort of alliances, um, different relationships between people. Um, you find out more about the magic of the system, about the gods, about the law that's happened before. The the world building is always brilliant in in Gwyn. You just feel really immersed in the story. Lots of porridge eating, so I'll be having a lot of porridge, <laughs> and it just feels like this nice cold, autumny, proper saga to read in front of a fire. I cannot wait. Um, I have read John Gwynn's Faithful and the Fallen and I definitely found that the more you read of the series, the more you got into it. And he finished off the series brilliantly. Um, I was so excited about different arcs and things that happened with characters. Going from The Shadow of the Gods to The Hunger of the Gods, the same. There was a character that grew on me so much more that I was really excited to hear about the, the story continuing. There's others they've ended up in different situations. There's characters that I, I really hate and want to enjoy hating. There's characters that I'm really protective of and want them to stay alive. There's sort of cliffhangers going on that we don't quite know how things have left. So I really feel ready as soon as I get hold of that book to just start reading it straight away. And I cannot wait to um, go along to the... John Gwynn and C.L. Clark talk at Waterstones in Brighton. It's going to be awesome. So yeah, final final book for the pile is going to be The Fury of the Gods, which gives me this lovely whoa, book stack. Don't fall. Um, okay, so I've got a nice mixture in here. I've got a sort of more um, one-off, lighter fantasy with elemental fairies and nature with the nature of which is by Rachel Griffin. I have got mythology with um, the heart of the sun warrior by Sunin Tan. I've got middle grade with the girl uh, of ink and stars. Um, I've got sort of a darker folk tale of sleep like death by Caelan Bayron. And I've got epic Norse fantasy by John Gwynn, the fury of the gods. And that is the books that I've chosen. There are other things that I do want to be reading that I'm going to go through now. Plus, please do not forget to choose from one of these books here um, to vote on which one I should also try and read to uh, read on physical TBR books that I've um, of the month that I've missed out on. That would be that would be very nice. So, other books that I will be reading. I am definitely going to be reading The Library of the Lost by Rebecca Stead and Wendy Mass because I am working through the 2023 
um, Middle Grade Reader's Choice Awards and will be telling you what I think of them. So this is the final one that I will be reading. This was the winning book, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's quite thin. Um, I've recently acquired it I because um, it's only really available in America. You can order it from the UK, but it's like one of those ones you have to send off for and it kind of comes back to you. Um, I'm very excited with this copy. It's a nice little hardback with gold um, end pages. And then we've got a little paw print on the front of the book. Um, so this is um, about a cat and a library and um, a boy. So I'm very excited. I think there's ghosts in here as well. There might also be a ghost. So all fun times. Um, then for my um, book box prediction project that I really want to have finished by the end of the year, the books I'm choosing this time from Shelterbox is the one that I'm most excited about, which I've already mentioned on this video, and that is The Mountain Sing. The cover just looks beautiful. We've um, got a possible protagonist um, figure with um, Chinese style dress and hat um, staring sort of like off into the distance with a red sun and we've got orange and yellow sort of like across the page so it's kind of like been ripped and it just gives this sunset feeling and just the edges of it are gold foil so it's just really pretty. Um, I've heard really good things about this book. I feel it's going to make me cry. I feel it's going to be quite heavy, but I think it's going to be beautiful at the same time. And oh, far, far away. I have my fairy loot one, which is The Ones We Burn by Rebecca Mix. So I think this is kind of a witchy standalone fantasy. Um, it says, I am a weapon, use me. I am the monster, I am the shield, I am the knife in the dark. Um, so I'm hoping that I will enjoy this one. I'm hoping it'll be fun. <laughs> I, again, I don't know a huge amount about it. Um, it feels quite big, but then it's got a lot of fantasy world to cover. Um, I think we've got two opposing sides um, and some kind of injustice and witches being outlawed, I think, but I'm not 100%. So I will obviously let you know. Um, there are other books that are on my radar as well, but I'm going to leave it here for now. I think that is plenty to be getting on with. Um, so let me try and hoof up this stack. So the full stack <laughs> plus another book. So let's use this as a placeholder. Okay, so placeholder for whichever one you vote for. That is oh, that's nine books. Um, that's definitely going to keep me going. Hopefully I will get all the ones I want to read in October read. That would be nice. And then I can just sit back and enjoy these. So thank you so much for watching. Um, please tell me what books you are hoping to read in November. Um, what are, what is your way of choosing books? Are you very much mood reading, enjoying just picking up what strikes you at the moment? Have you got about six books on the go? Are you desperately trying to finish certain books that you've had as like, 25 classics to read and it's not 25 <laughs> 24 classics to read in 24 or um try to read a certain amount of series please let me know because you know i love a chat happy reading everyone